Next on BYU Sports Nation, happy Halloween, everyone. And per the norm, I'm solo in costume. As Han Solo, of course, what's the deal? And I dressed up as the Mandalorian without his helmet. Can you see Baby Yoda? Yeah, there he is. He's in a, he's in a little cup. Box. That's not how the Halloween force works. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell you the odds. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Yes, it is Monday, October 31st. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, alongside the belated birthday boy, Jerem Jordan. Happy Thanks, birthday man. yesterday. Thanks, man. Uh, it was fun. I had what I called the 5S dinner. So we had steak, okay, okay. salmon, shrimp, salad, soda. So Ooh, it was great. All right. Let's throw some ribeyes on there and whatnot. It was awesome, man. Okay, on this program today, because it's Halloween, that means BYU Athletic Director Tom Homo, who is literally the best Halloween costume yes. artist that exists on the yep. planet, he will reveal his costume in Studio B coming up in the next segment. Cannot wait to see that. Plus, we've got to ask him a question about the Big 12 TV deal that's coming up. BYU's going to cash in what the reports are and how much it is. WCC Cross Country champs Aubrey Frentaway and Casey Klinger will join us in studio to talk about their big wins in Portland, mm -hmm. plus game day guarantees that didn't, fantasy follow-up, and is Zach Wilson in danger of getting benched? But first, today's headlines. Multiple media outlets led by the Sports Business Journal which broke the story yesterday, reporting the Big 12 Conference is signing a new TV grant of rights deal with ESPN and Fox valued at roughly $31.67 million per school and up to $50 million per school when you throw in additional funding from the college football playoff, NCAA basketball tournament, and third tier rights. This will all go into effect in 2025. It's a six year deal. Much more on what this means for BYU in just a few minutes. BYU football loses to ECU on a last second field goal, 27-24. Friday night marking the Cougars fourth straight loss. Not sure you, you heard about that. Lapini Cato ran for 116 yards and a touchdown. Here's linebacker Keenan Peely with Spencer after the game. Yeah, I think we just gotta keep believing. I think that's what we did in the locker room, climbing and browse together and um, reminded us that, that we're getting better, we're improving, but that there's a lot that needs to be done. And we got to keep buying into each other, closing out the outside noise, and working with each other, loving each other a little more to get better each day. And that's what we do. BYU plays Boise State Saturday at 7 Eastern on FS2. Uh, what? FS2? Keenan Peely talking about how they're getting better. We'll discuss, is, what's the defense good enough on, on Friday? Lots of uh, opinions, uh, especially in my uh, Twitter on Friday night. On to Cougars in the NFL. Zach Wilson had a few opinions shared about him yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. The New York Jets saw their four-game win streak come to an end on Sunday with a loss to Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Wilson threw for a career-high 355 yards and two touchdowns, good for Jerem's fantasy prospects, but threw three costly interceptions. Well, that cost the Jets the game in large part. They dropped to 5-3 and three on the season. Tyler Algier continues his successful rookie campaign in a Falcons win against Brady Christensen and the Panthers. Algier ran for 39 yards, caught three passes for 46 yards, and a receiving touchdown in Atlanta's wild win. Taysom Hill in the same division, still awesome and still a nuisance for opponents, had 10 carries, 61 yards, threw one completion, caught a pass, you know, normal Taysom stuff, in a Saints shutout win over the Las Vegas Raiders. Jamal Williams ran for two touchdowns for the Lions to get his total up to eight, tied for first in the NFL and a loss to the Dolphins. Fred Warner had 12 tackles and a sack as the Niners beat the Rams 31-14. And tonight, Sione Takitaki and the Browns scrap against the Bengals on Monday Night Football. By the way, regarding FS2, if there's a World Series Game 7, it will be on FS2. If there's not, it could be on FS1 because Texas Kansas State could be, get flexed into Fox. I wonder if that. So that, let's hope there's a game seven. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and push it to FS1. Let's go. Both the number two men's and number five women's cross country teams at BYU sweeping the individual and team competitions last weekend at the WCC Cross Country Championships in Portland. Aubrey Friendaway leading the women and Casey Klinger doing the same for the men. For the record, it's the men's eighth straight team title. That's domination. And fifth straight for the women, also domination. We'll hear from both champs later in the show. 17th ranked women's volleyball got the brooms out against Portland this weekend. Abby Taylor, seven aces, second most in the rally era. Taylor started again for the injured setter Whitney Bauer. 
Cougars play at San Francisco and Santa Clara this week. 13th ranked BYU women's soccer tying number 23 Santa Clara in the WCC rivalry on Saturday night. BYU outshot the Broncos 24 to 4, but it ends in a draw. Cougars will wrap up the regular season on the road with a couple of matches beginning at San Diego and then at Loyola Marymount. You can listen to both of those matches live on the BYU radio app. And former Cougar football and rugby player Paula CK, who plays for the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby, made the 30-man player pool for USA Rugby as they compete for the final spot in the Rugby World Cup in a four-team tournament in Dubai, November 6th, 12th, and the 18th. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. I got my blaster here, so I feel I should do this. We get ready for what's trending. Just, just randomly. <laughs> uh, boring conversation. Yeah. Anyway. Chewy! <laughs> you should have company! <laughs> my favorite scene. Yes, throw it in hyperdrive. Big 12, big money, big delivery, yep. Jerem, by yep. Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark. Well, then. This reported new deal with ESPN and Fox, six years worth a combined $2.28 billion, which, doing the math, estimates at about $31.7 million for just that ESPN Fox deal per school does not include the NCAA basketball tournament, college football playoff monies, and some other things that could raise that number. So does all of that, based on the conversation that we've had, exceed your expectations? It did. Uh, well, well uh, the 50 number does. The 31.7, that's probably spot on what I was thinking, something around there, which is tremendous. Uh, and again, this doesn't start in next year. This starts in 25. And that's up from about 22 and 22.5 million per school yes. with this deal in the previous that, contract. Yes, which, which is in 2012. Ten years later, things have changed a little bit. <laughs> I'm completely distracted because Tom's in here. <laughs> I just saw him. We won't show you for a sec. <laughs> I just saw Tom. Okay, um, yes, uh, ESPN and Fox, first off, the money number is uh, the first thing that sticks out. But also, you want to be on ESPN and Fox. You do. Because that's the most exposure you're going to get. Yes, you could get more money on, say, Apple or Amazon. But the exposure is going to be less. Bars aren't throwing up Amazon and Apple as easily as they are linear channels like ESPN and Fox. So I like that as well. When you hear the number go up to as high as 50, and yes, NCAA tournaments, college football playoff, and expansion, and so on and so forth, Feels like a lot of money to try and get to 18 mil there. Um, but I, obviously, BYU's been in a situation where they're probably making, what, a third of that in TV revenue specifically. If you go to 50, like you're four or five times what BYU's been making, it feels like. That's great. Now you can do some things that you haven't been able to do. And BYU operates in the black, meaning they don't spend it till they got it. So BYU's going to get it on the reg way more frequently. The next few years, BYU, we understand, is at about 50% of the current TV deal, which will be somewhere between, it sounds like, 9 and $11 million a year, which is about on par with what we think BYU is making now. But once they get to 100% of that allotment in the new TV deal, that's great, man, because now BYU can do some stuff like we talked about, and I mentioned my top five things I want to see in the next, I don't know, decade or something or 15 years with this money. Now you can go places you haven't been, and therein lies the real power, Spencer. It is access to, you know, what was the college football playoff and whatnot in a way that BYU hasn't had as an independent. You also got to have a season where you validate that. BYU's not quite had that. Hopefully they do soon. But the power of the money, the influence, the recruiting difference you can make, and also the fan experience, right? If you, make, if you upgrade the press box and have better fan suites, the fans that are in those suites get a benefit from that money as well in the stadiums. Maybe there's a soccer press box. Maybe you build a bridge over... Uh, University Avenue over to Provo High, and you have something over there. Who knows? I think we all benefit from this. BYU has always done a fantastic job of exceeding value for the fan experience and teams with the monies that they've had. Like, it's always Always like, on a budget. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We don't have to do that now. Well, right? now, it just makes me excited for, okay, well, how can they maximize a huge number now? and get even more out of the big number that they're going to receive. This is fantastic news because BYU is very, very smart as an athletic department and as a school with the money that they have. So I'm looking forward to what happens there. In terms of expectations, yes. When I saw the $50 million number dropped, and that was by Jamie Pollard, the Iowa State Athletic Director, who said, wow, Brett Yormark delivered in a huge way. This is, this is going to take us to another level. And he was the one that revealed, like, 
hey, don't get caught up in just the Fox ESPN deal. Like, there's a, a lot more, you know, there are a lot more layers to this. Sure. And take us up toward 50 million. Like, that one was like, whoa. That's a huge Fi- That's a huge number for the Big 12. Uh, and I think that, you know, Brett Yormark was very bullish. He was very confident. He was very forthright and kind of uh, transparent about the Big 12 feeling very confident about what they were going to get and that they were going to have a deal with ESPN and Fox. And it's like, okay, you're the new guy. I love it. You know, you're putting your good foot forward. Now let's deliver. Well, he delivered and then some. And so the number, yes, exceeds my expectations. Uh, I I am interested to see what happens uh, with the third tier rights as it pertains to BYU because we've had a huge, you know, uh, I guess, influence on how BYU sports are perceived and shown in, in that regard. This is a, this is a game changer. You know, BYU going to the Big 12 it's, is, is, is going to change. It's going to be different than BYU in the West Coast Conference. It sounds like ESPN is going to have those rights for the most part. So we'll see if we're, uh, you know, by the way, men's volleyball not affected by this. We'll have all those on BYU TV. We'll see what all the details are, and we'll, we'll tell you as we go. Uh, if we have, uh, you know, not, no men's volleyball, maybe we're the ones doing the games behind the scenes anyway. Who knows? Uh, and maybe we're still calling games on ESPN. But I don't know. We'll figure all that out. But you're going to have to get ESPN Plus, BYU fans. you got to have ESPN Plus in the Big 12. We know that. Yes. You're going to have, you're gonna have to have Fox, FS1, and FS2, maybe even on Saturday against Boise State, right? And, again, this is for 2025. The next two years, existing deals. Sure, sure. And, and you know what? Like, new deal uh, in the Big 12 in 2025. It'll still be a little bit of an upgrade, I believe, for BYU financially, even in the next two years. Even though they're getting 50%, yeah. just because the Big 12 sends so many teams to the NCAA tournament. Yes. and again, that number I was mentioning is TV revenue right. only. Right, right. Yeah. When you add the other stuff, which, by the way, plus 18 just feels like a lot per team. That's Abs- a lot. Absolutely. That's it's a huge that's like deal. Per team? Holy Brett, your cow. mark delivered big money for the Big 12. And that's the high end. They're not going to say what the average or is. You know, you're going to say, well, it could be as much as this. That's how it works, right? <laughs> Okay, topic two. I got some flack for having this opinion Friday after the ECU ECU loss, so you weigh in. Mm -hmm. Did the defense play well enough to win on Friday? Yes. I have said this several times. I said it right after the game. Had the conversation with David Nixon and Blaine Fowler, and you were up there. We we were talking about I felt like the BYU defense did enough to get a win on Friday night. And I'm shocked a little bit because I wouldn't have pinned it on the offense to, you know, have to score some more points. Like, if, if someone was going to trip up or side of the ball was going to come up short, based on everything that had been discussed and the trends that we've been seeing, it was probably going to fall on the defense. But they did enough, Jerem. They did enough, They did man. enough, and they did enough with some guys I didn't even know were on the team. Carter when Krupp. The season beat. Yes, number the, 15, Carter I was like, Krupp. Who is number 15? And unfortunately, Carter Krupp got hurt, but fast dude, by the way. Yeah, well, so did Chaz Ayu. And BYU was without oh, their Chaz. top four defenders. Think about this, Jerem. No Malik Moore. No Peyton Wilgar, no Max Tooley, no D'Angelo Mandel. Chaz Ayu out after, what, essentially one series? Like, those five guys were not on the BYU defense, and I still I felt like guys. BYU did enough defensively to win this game. It's unfortunate that yeah. the Cougars could not convert some critical downs. A couple of fourth downs they fall short on on offense. A big third down where Mason Wake drops a pass that probably would have gone for a first down and extended a drive. And, Jerem, I mean, the fourth down stuff. So, BYU's 5 for 20 on fourth down conversions this no season, winning. 25%. Consider that they were 3 for 3 against USF in game one. So, since USF, since game one, 2 for 17 converting fourth downs. Yeah, at what point do you... Kick a field goal? Fi- Maybe. Okay. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, to me, that's a big moment in the game. No game is won or lost on one play. So, let's talk about a series of plays, Spence. Yes, beginning of the fourth quarter, BYU has the ball at the 12-yard line. Jake Older has already made a field goal. A longer one, a 39-yard field goal. This is a 29-yarder. Take the points there. In hindsight, easy to say that, of course. You mentioned the Mason Wake drop. Obviously, the Caleb Hayes P.I. is a, is a tough one at the end. Um, yeah, there's a few plays here and there where it's like, oh, shoot, you make a play right there, you yes. win this game. Yes. And we feel different about this squad. We say, oh, BYU's going bowling, we're good. Let's hit this later in the week. I definitely think BYU needs to make a bowl game more than not. If you didn't make a bowl game, it might summon a change that maybe people want in a certain way, but I'd hate to see a guy like Jaron Hall and Puka Nakua and others not have a bowl Absolutely. game this year. So I want BYU to make a bowl game. 
but you can certainly still have a losing record even if you get to one, which is a bummer. We thought this team would be better. We've been preaching this for the last couple weeks. We're all tired of hearing it. At Boise State, it's a tough game, man. they got a really, really good defense. They're top five defense in America right now, and that's going to be tough. Man, typically my game is not second-guessing coaches, and I don't like to do that because, you know, they – they are paid a lot of money to make critical decisions like that. And, and I hear a lot of, well, the analytics say you should typically go for it on fourth and short. What about the analytics? Well, the are analytics are two for 17 right now. I was going to say, yeah, that's tough. And th no, it's fair to ask certain questions. Ah, Is it tough when we interact with said coaches often? Yeah, but sure. we, got, we got a job to do. So, yes, there are certain questions that need to be uh, answered. And we're sure, going to hear sure. from some of that coming up in Coordinator's Corner. All Maybe right, you. let's go to you in Voice of the Nation. Enough with what happened against East Carolina. Back to big money <laughs> <laughs> for BYU as they move to the Big that 12. That was so Friday night. <laughs> Our question is this. Which is the bigger story today? Is it the Big 12 media deal? Or are you still hung up on now four straight losses for BYU football? Maybe you don't want to move past what happened on Friday night. At the Oral Care Club, answers on Insta. It's like Brush and easy, floss every day. That's an easy way to get in the Brush show. and floss every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's getting violent up in here. The Oral Care Club on Insta Whoa! says, Big 12, this season is over. Is it? I, I, don't, I don't think. I think there are three games left. Spence. <laughs> Spence. It's over. Even if BYU wins out, <laughs> never tell me the odds, never Jerem. Never tell them the odds. Even if BYU that's wins fair. out, There's that still means an 8-5 and five season and a trip to an inconsequential bowl game against an opponent <laughs> from a non-Big 5 conference. You don't know that for sure. You don't know that. Like, like we have no idea what the bowl game Does representatives it? would put, what, what game they put BYU in, and if a Power 5 opponent would be there. Could be right. the Fiesta Bowl. They very, well, no. they very well could play a Power 5 opponent. Anyway, continues, knowing that BYU will probably be making more money than the Pac-12 is going to be a huge boost in recruitment in the years to come. Here we go. Big 12 versus Pac-12. That will help. With a lot more games. Hashtag BYUSN. That is the hope. Questions to be answered. Coordinator's Corner coming up at 2 Eastern Time. Elias Tuyaki, Ed Lamb will be on the program as they discuss the ECU game. Talk about a big game with Boise State coming up Saturday at 2 Eastern on the BYU TV. I'm sure fourth down conversions will be brought up. I'm looking forward to that response. Yeah. And what is BYU Athletic Director Tom Homo dressed up as this year? <laughs> It's good, dude. He's got a crazy standard to uphold, and, of course, he's not going to disappoint. The big reveal next on BYU Sports Nation. Let's go. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. is all about the rivalries. Red, blue, quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. For Mountain America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Tell the hell. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that, let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing. Or, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs>
There is no athletic director that handles Halloween the way that BYU's Tom Holmo does. Now, the goat of Halloween costumes. Agreed. What's weird is BYU's actually been making $50 million a year in TV money. It just goes to Tom's costume every year. <laughs> we are live in Studio B, and yes, I've got my Han Solo boots. Nice on boots, for dude. To see. If you're ever Jack Sparrow, you can just switch those uh, in for that. It'll be good. <laughs> it's, they could, yeah, they could double as pirate boots for Absolutely. sure. Why, why not? This is your day to day BYU sports play by I play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan, and you have waited go. long enough. Here we go. The big reveal. Tom Homo enters <laughs> Studio B with this new costume. <laughs> it's a Star Wars theme. It's perfect. Yes, it's Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Holy snakes. So good. The tallest Yoda ever. Oh, 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 my. oh, old, oh. Man, old man Yoda showing up here. He is the Jedi Master Yoda. Tom, welcome to Studio B on a Star Wars-themed Halloween. It's been a long time since I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. You're the, can you hear out of the... I can hear. <laughs> yeah. My hearing is still good. At 800 <laughs> years plus old, the hearing is good. Uh, wow. Incredible, incredible stuff. Hey, I feel like we showed up today. Now... Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda. <laughs> Do you know Grogu? Are you friends with Grogu? Yes, very well. <laughs> <laughs> They're all connected. Tom, this is unbelievable. I, we always are like, man, what's he going to do this year? How is he going to outdo himself? And I say we, but mostly you. Uh, actually connected here in the same universe, which is pretty cool. There was, by the way, zero no plans for this. Yeah. No conversation at all about this, about Star Wars. And it yeah, just at happened. Least you two. This is just the kidding. this is karma. This is this is <laughs> protect Yoda at all costs. Yes, we hope he doesn't disappear suddenly during the interview. That's our one <laughs> kind of hope here. Possible. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah, we'll be be careful. Don't say anything dumb because uh, then we might be putting like some type of force stranglehold. Yeah, yes, there will be. So, yeah, well, yeah. Careful. <laughs> I'm rising out right. my chair. I'm sorry. Uh, wow. How long were how long were you in costume preparation today? Couple hours with my dear friend Janine, who does all the makeup, and then we had to get the costume together with uh, my sister-in-law Rhonda. Wow, Janine Hollenshaus does yep. this every yep. year. She's clearly the best, and Rhonda. I mean, this is an elite costume. Are we seeing the feet here as well, everybody? It's fantastic. Are we seeing the feet. We got three toes. We got three fingers. This is all super legit. Okay, how how long ahead of time do you come up with what you're going to do? Do you know next year's already? No, I, I really forgot. I mean, sometime in the summer now, it's become, it's, it's a little bigger than I thought it would ever get. <laughs> so when people start asking me what I'm going to be in June and July, I figure, uh-oh, I better start thinking about what it's going to be. So I usually, I have a few ideas, and I, I text a message to, always to Janine and go, can we do this one? And I give the name. And there's like a, it depends on how long the, re, the response is delayed. <laughs> and you, she's never said no. Mm. There's been a few that we've passed on. And then I have to go to Rhonda Montgomery and see if she can pull it off. Like Rafiki, she had never really done fur costuming for a, um, some, an, an animal. And so that one was a little bit tougher. So this one was, I go, hey, it's just fun. Oh, it's what, was this one you wanted to do for a few years? Because Yoda's like, no, a, this is a classic, I, amazing one. I mean, I'm not a big Star Wars fan. Okay. I mean, I remember going to opening night mm -hmm. like years ago. It was 77. 77, yeah. Like yeah. And, uh, and we had to wait in line for like four hours to get into the show. So by the time I got in there, I was half asleep anyway. <laughs> And, was uh, that in Provo or back home in California? Back home in California, yeah. This was in high school. Yeah. And uh, that, so, but I, I love all the characters. I love the, the morals, the, the great truths yes. that Yoda speaks. Yes. And so um, it doesn't really have anything to do with current events going on at this point in time. <laughs> BYU Athletic Director Tom Homo, as Yoda, AKA is with Yoda. us on BYU Sports Nation. Did you ever envision that this would become like such a national phenomenon? Because everybody picks up on this, like Bleacher Report, Darren you know, Ravel, is Darren like, Ravel, yeah, he, he always like posts about it, it goes viral every year. So, do you, do you no, feel any no. pressure with this? No, I mean, I, like I said it before, the the student athletes here, when I didn't dress up uh, originally, they start getting after me, and then I tried to do a little cheap one, and like was Justin Bieber. 
I had like a t-shirt and a little wig and <laughs> some little silly stuff. And they dogged me even further. So I said, okay, that's it. And then I hooked up with Janine. And then a couple years later with Rhonda. And, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> well, I, I think this plays into, whether you mean it or not, BYU Athletics, which is, if we're going to do it, let's do it well. And now we have this, the report of the Big 12 TV contract. Um, and, and, you know, we're waiting for the official announcement. But too, many, too much fire, uh, smoke there not to be fire, right? What, do, what does that mean for BYU Athletics? Like, what are you going to be able to do that you haven't been able to do? Well, I, I think it goes back to uh, like the beginning of last football season when we were invited to be part of the Big 12. That's what it's all about. That's what we were fighting for. Um, we knew that things, if they continued on and, and went as according to plan, things would be better for us. But there's been some ups and downs and in-betweens with conference expansion and shrinking and expanding and all the different things going on. And we weren't you know, really sure where this was ever going to land. And it hasn't landed yet. You know, nothing's really quite official, but obviously with the news of the last day, you can see that things are very, very close. And I think what that does is it gives us opportunities. And that's what we've always been waiting for, is opportunities for our student athletes to play against the very best week in and week out. We've tried to play great competition, and we feel we have our assistant coaches and our uh, head coaches have tried to put together great non-conference season uh, schedules. The WCC has been very good at the top of the, all the sports. And here we are now mm. looking, getting an experience of what it's going to be to play tough, tough teams week in and week out. And we ha know that we have, we've learned a lot in this year. This was been, it, we knew it was going to be a transition year in many regards. We didn't think it would take a left turn like it has, but all of this will be preparation for next year when we enter the Big 12. I'm not sure if the great Yoda had foresight into the figures that were going to be put into this deal. <laughs> we were just talking about expectations. Brett Yormark has done a fantastic job from what we can tell from, you know, our wide view here. And, and again, we're not in the nitty gritty, but... Did, did the numbers and the figures that came out yesterday exceed your expectations? Well, I, I think when you looked at what happened with the Big 12 last year when they lost a couple um, longtime standing members in Oklahoma and Texas, you know, the country, sports enthusiasts everywhere thought it was the beginning of the end. And so I think when, when Bob Bowlesby went out and got the four of us, BYU, Cincinnati, UCF, and, and uh, Houston, that that was a big move. Mm. People weren't quite sure what that meant. And then uh, when Brett Mo Yormar came in and went to work right away immediately to try to put together and make everybody see that this is going to be something different. We'll see what different means, but obviously broadcast partners have thought that this difference is going to be something special. And that's we're all grateful for that. Fantastic stuff. The, it's, it's uh, you know, we're getting some serious answers here as Yoda. And you're still <laughs> moving the hand. <laughs> uh, Chris Ortega on Twitter. Happy Tom Homo Day. It, it is that. <laughs> In BYU Sports Station, it is Tom Homo Day and on thanks, Halloween. And thanks for including us as a part of the tradition. Oh, uh, for sure. In here. It's uh, one of the things that you said about being all in is when I came to BYU, it was interesting that a lot of the student athletes dress up. They have a, there's, it's a spirited place. There's a lot yeah. of people on campus. I don't know how many campuses across the country. Look, we're stone cold, so, stone cold sober, and we dress up on Halloween, and that's a good thing. <laughs> and I love, like, what I do today is I go around to a lot of the teams, and it's fun, and it makes us happy. We find joy in our relationships, and it's going on to build. So it's not just about me. This is about putting our arms around Cougar Nation. It's a good day for Cougar Nation, so... Go Cougs. Hey, not that you need my blaster or protection, but it's there for you if you'd like it, okay? And I'm ready to take the Millennium Falcon up to uh, Boise and beat the odds, Tom. Is that <laughs> I, I lost my lightsaber on the way over here. <laughs> but I'll find it. Let's you go. lost it when you didn't uh, sense that uh, Palpatine was the emperor, but that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Tom. Do or do not. <laughs> There is no try. There is no try. <laughs> I've told that to my daughter recently. All right, after further review, reviews the ECU game as Dave Blaine and David break it down. Boise State, big game coming up Saturday as well. 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Yoda out. Oh, well, Going back to Dagobah. So great.
Hey, is the honeymoon over already for Zach Wilson and the New York Jets? Maybe Yoda can tell us about that. He, he might hit us with that stick. we got to be careful here. The Cougar Whip <laughs> Round hits next. <laughs> Jedi moves. Yoda out. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. If you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in nonstop intrigue, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. BYU Sports Nation, Yoda list, but Han Solo, <laughs> so good. <dude. laughs> Follow us on social media to see more stuff with Han Solo and Yoda on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jerem, rocking the baby Yoda t-shirt. I'm Spencer, Han Solo Linton. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Wrap presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Does the new Big 12 deal make the conference more, quote, open for business with expansion? Certainly, but we don't really know until we find out what the Pac-12 media rights deal is. And I imagine it's not going to be that far off from what the Big 12 be is. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty close. So if it's pretty close, maybe there is an expansion happening and maybe there's more inclination for some of those teams in the Pac-12 to stay put and keep doing their thing. I don't think the Big 12 was so big that the four no. corners go, we're out! Like, it's, it wasn't like 50 in TV revenue. Now, if the Pac-12 network were going to continue on with this new TV rights deal, then maybe the four corners wants out. <laughs> well, it depends on the revenue, right? Yeah. Uh, which it doesn't seem like that's they want These teams want to be seen, and I think they will be seen with whatever new deal they get in the Pac-12, which kind of leads them to probably yeah. stay. They're just, uh, there's more Bay Area influence, so and, and even Seattle, so you'd think that Amazon and Apple are yes. players because of locale. Streaming services. Schools, potentially. Absolutely. All right, Jeremy, on to the NFL. Zach Wilson struggled yesterday. Three yep. interceptions, yep. and they were all kind of head scratching. I mean, two of them were like, what? Three, huh? All three were bad. What? Yeah, it was tough. One down the sideline to, what? Yep. You know? Yep. Is Zach Wilson in danger of being benched? I think he's got a game or two left, but like, yeah, I think he is. The, the play's not good enough. His turnovers really cost him the game yesterday. I, they score, uh, they have a, what, pick six that comes back because of roughing the pass. That was a big moment in that game as well. His QBR is four, uh, you know, 48, 24th in the NFL. He only has three touchdown passes in five games. Yes, he was injured, but yeah, Zach's capable of playing better. He's not playing great right now. I hope he turns it around because we're starting to see even the guys that have defended him pretty heavily in Rich Samini and Mike Greenberg of ESPN who have been on the Zach train. Like Mike Greenberg said yesterday, the Jets are a playoff team being held back by their quarterback. I, I agree with that. And that's tough because Zach, we've seen Zach play so well, especially here. We've, we've seen flashes of it in games, even this season. 
But yeah, if Zach plays better, Jets yes. are a playoff He's got to turn it defense. around. The hard part is, I think they have the Bills next, which is a terrible matchup that's, given the circumstances. That's a loss. Yeah, that's that's rough. Yeah. Um, and I don't think if I'm trying to remember who they play after the Bills. But like the next two weeks, I know are tough games yeah. for Zach Wilson and the Jets. They probably got to get to ten wins to make the playoffs with 17 mm. game schedule. Maybe not. Tyler Algier of the Falcons, Brady Christensen of the Panthers, appeared to Jersey Swap on Sunday. They took this photo yep. together. Are they supposed to take the photo with these the others jersey, or do you hold up your own? I'm confused here. Uh, I, I don't, thought you take. I don't, I don't know the if there is a protocol jersey. here, but yeah, like you certainly take the other players' jersey. Maybe they were just in a hurry and not thinking about it. But <laughs> typically, <laughs> I, you I would hold think the you other hold players' the others, jersey, right? Yeah. Sure. I don't yeah. know. Oh, good. They, Lo- they exchanged them. I know yeah. that. What a crazy game, by the way. Oh my god. DJ goodness. Moore catches a touchdown pass, ties the game, takes off his helmet. Panthers have to take a PAT from the 48, uh, 48 yarder, miss it. Oh, Panthers man. miss a field goal in OT, and uh, Falcons win with the field goal themselves. That was a crazy game. Wild. But not the best win of the day. That went to my seat. And shout out to their kicker, Koo, who is a South Korean. South Korean. Let's go, man. Mina Kim. my team. Mina Kim, shout out. BYU is a seven and a half point underdog at Boise State, Jim. Is that fair? Yes, sir. it is. Uh, Boise State four and zero at home, uh, six and two. Fantastic defense. Taylor Green is the quarterback now. Uh, Hank Bachmeyer doesn't play for Boise State though, so you know what that means? You just got a chance to win. Why am I? Why is this orange on Boise State week? I'm not using that pen. Sorry, my bad. All right, I will say this. Totally fair line. I, I think it opened at eight. Now it's down to seven and a half. I have no issues with that. In 2019, when BYU hit rock bottom and they were two and four, and, and fans were like, oh man, BYU's probably not even going to make a bowl game. Ranked Boise State came to Provo, and BYU figured it out and really shocked the Broncos and the country and won that game. Killed their near 16. BYU's going to have to do something similar here because the belief is low. You're going to the blue this time. And so, honestly, I thought the line would be a little bit higher. I thought my mm. was like nine or ten. So seven and a half. They yeah. Have, they haven't played a crazy uh, tough schedule. But can BYU do what they did in 2019 and surprise Boise State? That'd be nice. And turn it around because if BYU beats Boise State, they're going to beat Utah Tech, and then they will go to a bowl game. Beating Boise State means BYU is going to a bowl game. Yeah. One FBS win equals bowl game. I don't want BYU to be five and six taking on five and six Stanford in the final game. I, I do not want that. I don't scenario. think Stanford will be five and six. You think they're going to be four and seven? I think they'll be out of it by now. They got to play Utah and Washington State and Cal, and they're three and five right now. Woo! Just, just, uh, just lost UCLA. Men's cross country wins its eighth straight WCC title. The women won their fifth straight. Is BYU a running school? No, not yet. No, because it's a volleyball school. <laughs> but there are too many other great programs to just signify BYU as a running school. Northern Arizona is a running school. Yes. yes. BYU, Northern Arizona is. BYU's best. Duo of teams, though, is cross country. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, across the board, the men it's, and the women. It's not even debatable. Combined? It's not sure. even debatable. And the volleyball volleyball teams may have something to say about that if they can turn things around. Right, but they're not both in the top five. No. They're not both winning national champs. Totally fair. Not, not, not again, a running not school. Debatable. Right now, BYU kind of feels like a really high excelling Olympic sports school. You know? Yeah. That's good football seasons in For 2020 sure. and 2021. Absolutely. It'll always be a great football. tradition. Great always brand. be a football. The brand of BYU is built on football, right? Absolutely. We're yes. mostly good. Speaking of one of those high performing Olympic sports, BYU women's soccer number 13 in the country tied number 23 Santa Clara. Not technically out of winning the West Coast Conference Championship race, right. but does it matter if the Cougars don't win the WCC? No, not really. They're up to 16 in the RPI, which is great. That means BYU will host a first-round NCAA tournament game. Yes. Regardless of what happens this week, and I Santa believe. Clara is 33 in the RPI, even after tying BYU. Right, not great. Uh, they haven't won enough in non-conference. So, yeah, it, it doesn't matter that much. Although, Santa Clara's 19 points. Portland, BYU with 15. Gonzaga with 14. There are four teams who could win the West Coast Conference Championship this year. BYU is going to win their final two games against Porus, San Diego, and LMU teams. They will win those games. They'll score a ton of goals. They'll finish with 21 points in the standings. Here's what needs to happen if BYU is to win the WCC title. They need Santa Clara to tie and lose either lose, yeah, exactly, two losses or 
a couple of ties, like two ties would do it as well. Yeah, you'd be co-champs. You'd be co-champs, and then well, I don't know how the tiebreaker. Tie I think tiebreakers are goal differential in conference play. Oh, uh, actually, I think it's rock paper scissors. Um, <laughs> so best out of three. Couple, of couple of ties that could happen because Santa Clara plays a couple of good opponents. Yes, they play tough teams now. All right. Okay, in her two starts, Abby Taylor, women's volleyball, the setter, uh, setting for the injured Whitney Bauer. Set BYU to 416 hitting percentage for Gonzaga on Thursday, then seven aces Saturday seven against aces. Portland. Which was more impressive? You know what? It, I was super impressed with what she did in the first match. It's harder to follow it up, Jaron. It's like, because high energy, like first opportunity, yeah! To be great again in a second match, to me, is more impressive. Like, to do it again, it's really, really tough. And she's, she's now two in a row. If she's, she's good again in the third match, now it's like, okay, she's just legit. She's pretty good. I yeah. think she is pretty good. Granted, the competition went down from playing San Diego, right, and Pepperdine and those, but LMU. But, yeah, no, really good. After she joked, hey, some of those were lucky, I said, you can't luck your way into seven. Like, no, seven's no. legit. Absolutely. That was awesome, man. How about this? Speaking of Stanford, who BYU plays in the regular season finale, the Stanford Tree account on Twitter tweeted out the following. This is great. Stanford has decided to suspend the tree. Hold on. At the Stanford Tree. <laughs> Not the Stanford Tree. The Stanford Tree. Stanford has decided to suspend the tree for walking out onto the field last game with a sign reading, Stanford hates fun. <laughs> <laughs> tree socials will be inactive for the next few months. Months? <laughs> See y'all soon. Is this a good thing for the BYU game that these tree socials will be quiet? <laughs> well, I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, uh, there's some crazy stories, trust me, from the men's volleyball team playing at Stanford with the tree and the student section. Yeah, stuff I can't even mention on the Oh yeah, for sure. I saw uh, a routine at halftime by the Stanford band section with the tree that we can't talk about on BYU TV. <laughs> BYUSN After Dark, coming in the Big 12 era Yeesh. on ESPN Plus. <laughs> BYU football. I want to blast that tree! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell the uh, Northwesterners, they're going to hug it. BYU Football, the Kalani Stocky has a lot to discuss. 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app coming up tomorrow night. Uh, newest Deep Blue features former Bronco turned Cougar QB Kate Fennigan and Lopini Katoa will be in the film room. Jerem, the champs are here. Hey! Aubrey Friendaway and Casey Klinger yeah. representing BYU men's and women's cross country as champs in studio to tell us how they got it done and expectations moving forward. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried & Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly.
Rain or shine, they just win. BYU men's and cross, men's and women's cross country, rather, representing at the West Coast Conference Championships over the weekend. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Happy Halloween. We're live in Studio B and here. It's Halloween. With... I thought this was just a normal day for you. Is that well? <laughs> I wish it could be. Han the pop color. I, I didn't think anything of it. <laughs> we have the champs with us. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Aubrey Frentaway and Casey Klinger, individual champs on okay. the women's and men's sides, respectively. Congratulations to both of you. You brought the trophies in to show it <laughs> off. Let's go. How are you feeling today? Good. Yeah? It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's special. I feel like um, I spent a lot of years, like, um, being inspired by a lot of my teammates, and so I think it was fun to, like, I don't know, just have that feeling crossing the finish line, so... That was and, awesome. and let's talk about it some more. Obviously, you talked about the, the greatness there, the program. You guys walked yeah. into a program that's winning, and you've helped further that. Uh, what was it like to finish first and win and be the next one, Aubrey? Yeah, I think it, it, was, it was really fun. It was really cool to cross, like, the finish tape. It made me smile. I think you can see in the video probably. Um, but I just think it, it says a lot about, like, the program and the sisterhood that we've built here and how Coach Taylor, how much that she puts into each of us. I think sometimes it's easy to just be like, oh, well, um, yeah, the top athletes are running well, but it's like she's really building a program from like every, if she's, she puts her energy into everybody. So I think it's, it was awesome to see that. And yeah, so. Both victorious in the rain. Casey, what's it like to run a race with that on the line in the rain? I mean, I've always liked ra racing in the rain. I mean, it's not cross country if there's no mud or hills. Or <laughs> Or rain or wind. It's so. indoor track. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I've always enjoyed it, but it was cool to watch the, the women win um, the individual and team title. So we were we were pretty hyped and excited to race and bring it on. Aubrey, are you a rain person? Is this I something love you prefer? the rain. Yeah, <laughs> I do. We did a run at in Park City, and it was all rainy and windy. And I was thinking about that during the race. I'm like, yes, this is just what I like. So. <laughs> yeah, and of course you're at elevation. You go to you know sea level in yeah. Portland, and you're like, hey, ain't no thing, right, with the rain. Uh, okay, Casey, you shaved off a minute from your previous West Coast Conference races. Did I read that right? Yeah, I mean, dude, how do you shave off a minute? That's a massive number. Different course. All courses are different. Some are faster. Some are slower. Um, it was a particularly good day for me. So. I don't know. Just just happened. Okay, uh, I, I ran cross country in high school. I'm uh, clearly not even uh, s you know remotely close to your levels. But in terms of what it takes to just run faster, because this is one of the OG sports, like boxing, punching someone else in the face, and running are like the OG sports, right? Um, what does it take to just run faster than everyone else in the conference? There's some natural talent there, but like physically, what does it require? Mentally, physically, and all that. Um, well, I kind of knew that my biggest competition were my own teammates so <laughs> it's kind of comforting to know that you're just going out and running with your best buddies that you've been training with all year so not a ton of pressure but um yeah I was happy that how that the guys performed the way they mm -hmm. did and it was, it was a good day. Yeah. Aubrey what does it mean for you and for the women's team specifically to win the finale of the West Coast Conference before you transition to the Big 12? Yeah I think that was it was an awesome way to kind of exit the WCCs. It's been, I, it's been the conference for me all my four years. Well, now it's fifth, but, <laughs> and um, I know that we've, we've had success in it. And I think it was awesome to just kind of go out. One of the things that we talked about is leaving with class. And so I think we, I hope we, we did that well. <laughs> so. Well, you've but, won every year. Yeah. I'd say that you're, you're leaving with class. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and glass uh, in the form and of the glass. trophy, which is awesome. God. Okay. <laughs> Can the Thompson <laughs> twins separate because they finished like point four within each other uh, with from each other Creed and Davin? Yeah, but it's, it's always different. Oh, da sometimes Davin, yeah, sometimes so, Creed yeah. first and second. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting because these are two <laughs> up and comers as well. Um, Casey, tell us about this men's team and sort of the the next evolution of it this year. Of okay, you guys hope to win a national championship again. The the pressure's on for both teams, men and women. Um, I, from the beginning of the year, I've just had a really good feeling about this team. Um, we kind of had a rough patch during indoor track last year, and I think it's really amazing the way we've bounced back and the res resilience of some of these guys. Mm. Um, there's been a lot of young guys who've stepped up. We've had a great transfer come in, Christian Allen from Weber State, um, who's been a great addition to our team. And so, 
yeah, we've had some great training, and it's just we're really excited for this championship season. I think it'll, I think it'll be good. Okay, so along with the transfer coming in, what else changed in that from that rough patch in indoor track to where you are now? Um, in the summer, we got together um, as a team, and we um, we chatted. We we made some goals. We talked about things that could change, things that we could do better, and um, we just kind of had a culture shift and it's been a really, really good thing for us, so. Congratulations to both of you. I mean, incredible stuff. Uh, we're thrilled for you. And yeah, bringing home some hardware. We look forward to watching you compete at the Nationals. It's gonna be At so Oklahoma State, by the way, where yeah. you've already run. You've already run that course, right? Yep. yep. Okay. I love it. And did pretty well. And you love it. I love Should we it. pray for rain in Oklahoma? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not really. Awesome. Happy Halloween to both of you again. Uh, hope you uh, get to experience Tom Homo in some capacity with you his costume up, at some point. Yeah. Costumes huh? today? Costumes tonight? No. We'll we see. did it on Saturday for our team. Oh, you did it on Saturday. Saturday. And what were you guys? I was Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Very nice. <Yeah. laughs> Lieutenant nice. Dan. I saw Tom Homo earlier today and kind of inspired me to put on some kind of ramp, costume. Ramp up today. again. Yeah, I'm going to need both of you to run a 5K <laughs> in those uniforms. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. That would be fun. Now it's a fun run. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. Okay, coming up on Wednesday, we got men's hoops uh, exhibition final tune-up for the regular season starts next Monday. Pre-game coverage starts at 8 Eastern time on BYU Sports Nation. Game. And which was scarier, the Halloween theme in play, game day guarantees or Jerem's fantasy football weekend? I know well, next. Both are just the worst. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Before I was a coach at BYU, or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU sports, it's all about the fans. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Some images from Friday night, and the uh, yeah, we got a we got a Nuggets fan. Yep, Marshmallow Head. I, I would I would call that out for being weird, but I literally wore a T-shirt today, so uh, I don't think I can. Uh, which, by the way. Uh, Joseph Duarte reports, Houston coach Dana Holgerson says the 2023 Big 12 football schedule will come out in a few weeks. He says it will be eye-opening. What does what, that mean? What could be eye-opening? Like, Texas playing nine rough games? Good luck to the Longhorns. Like, what, what could be eye-opening? Let's get to our fantasy football Friday recap, Jerem. Can't wait for this. Hey, Zach Wilson scored you some points. Yes, he did. And I wondered... But is this the know. week? Is this the week that yeah. Jerem's team gets it done? So 25 is a good number from Zach. I probably need 30 plus. Ben Bywater, great game, 11 points. Only got six. Uh, hold on, hold on. How do I only? Oh, it says TD one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I needed a few more receptions from yes. Brother Roberts. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. It hey. won't be enough to win. Okay. Zach Wilson right. outscored Jaron Hall by four points. So you got what you needed from the quarterback. Yeah. Remember how I said. Oh, look at Fred. I kind of feel like Jamal Williams is going to have a big weekend. I said, I don't know why. The two touchdowns. He scored two touchdowns. 19 points. Fred was 17. Massive. Huge number. I think this might be my high scoring week of the season. That's pretty good. You should have played points. Max Tooley. <laughs> 9 0 now. He was out of the game. Keep it rolling. Game Am I going to get a single win? That's the only That's, reason we're still that playing. That is this. the drama yeah. here. How about our game day guarantees? Here's our game day guarantee results. We have to give them to you. We're contractually obligated. Okay, here we go. I said, give me the over, 63 and a half. At halftime, they were patient for that. Nope, 51. 600 plus combined <laughs> passing yards. Nope, need to throw for 200. <laughs> ECU by 17, reverse curse. Reverse curse didn't work. ECU won the game. Over three. That's how I roll. This yeah. football season's been tough for the team and for me. <laughs> My guarantees. ECU will have at least one series of three and out. They did on the first try. I need to go that level. Well, it didn't happen again the rest of the game, Jerem. I know, but one three and out is going to happen every day, no matter how bad. It didn't happen the rest of the game, but they got one. And it was, oh, sorry, sorry. They, they did have two. They, two they did have two. two. Okay, two no, goals. Not yeah. BYU will finally not be outscored in the second quarter. Hey, the Cougars outscored the Pirates 14 to 10 in the second quarter. Plus four. And I said first to 30 wins. And dang it, I thought for sure that when BYU had the ball tied 24-24, they were going to go score a touchdown, get the 31st, and win the game. Yeah. Neither team got the 30. Dang it. All right. I'm 14 for 27 on the season. You're 7 for 27 on the season. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Our question of the day is this. Which is the bigger story today? Four straight losses for BYU football or the new Big 12 media deal? Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Ben Peterson on Twitter says, I think we got the perfect Halloween headline. Trick. BYU has lost four in a row. Treat five dollar signs. Good point. Money. A true elite voice of the day. Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Really cool moment between sets two and three at Alumni Weekend for women's volleyball on Saturday, where Elaine Michaelis was honored, standing L for over a minute. She got flowers. It was really emotional. Wow. Extremely emotional. Crazy influential, not just on women's volleyball, but women's athletics at BYU. She's incredible, and I love to see her at events still. She is not in great health, but makes it to almost every Man, event. incredible. Our thanks to today's guests, Tom Homo, Aubrey Frentaway, and Casey Klinger. And Yoda, sorry to Dennis, ran out of time. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to Miles Batty. I'll see you today for Coordinator's <laughs> Corner at 2 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Go Cougs. May the force be with you. Mm.